Oh, hey there. I didn't see you coming. So, how did it go? Did you find it? <laughs> Where are we? We're at home, silly. Where else would we be? Just mommy, sister, you and me. Now tell me, how did it go? Did you find it? No? Hmm, pity. Maybe you're simply looking in the wrong places. Did you ever think of that? Ugh. Oh well, who knows? Say, why don't you go inside and see if you can help mommy with the cooking? The creator was kind to us today and sent a big fat elk right in front of my bow. All right? My, my, I totally forgot what a mess I left here. But I was right, wasn't I? A real gem we've got here. Well then, let's waste no more time and get to it, shall we? What? Now would you look at that? I totally forgot about them. They're dead, don't you remember? You murdered them back then, both of them. But hey, no use crying over spilled milk, right? At least this means there's more meat for the two of us. You still remember how to do this, right? First, off with the skin. Slice up the belly, then out with the entrails. I'll look for a nice sharp knife in the meantime, to cut off the head. I don't think either of us wants to eat that, do we? <laughs> Oh, silly, what's this again? We both know that's a lie. You did it. I remember it all. First, you set this horrible fire to your sister's crib. She screamed and screamed, and Mommy heard it, but when she finally got there, nothing was left of her but burnt flesh. And, oh gosh, do we really need to go through this again? You know how sad it makes me when you do this. You killed them, period. No matter how often you tell me you didn't, it changes nothing. You hear me? Nothing. Now please, let's start cooking. I'm so bloody damn hungry. Oh, by the Creator's name, why are you telling these lies? Isn't it enough that you murdered us? Do you really have to bother me over and over with your stupid, pathetic, and pointless whining? You know, sometimes I wish the Creator would have made me just a little less merciful. Just a little less pious. Because then, I would have realized that you were tainted by sin long before any of this had ever happened. And instead of raising you, feeding you, and loving you like a father does, I would have put you in the horse trough right after you were born. Yes, I should have killed you. I should have just killed you. Just like you killed us. And now, you think you're safe because we're all under the earth, don't you? Well, listen up, my child. You are wrong. And do you know why? Because the dead don't forget. Do you hear me? The dead don't forget. Now enough of this useless chatter. I'm bloody starving. Bring me the meat, you spoiled brat. Bring it to me. Bring me a nice crisp piece of meat. Bring me a nice crisp piece of meat! 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 Let's begin with a question. It might sound simple to you at first, but I pray you to think about it. What distinguishes a free man from a slave? For now, however, let us start this story where another one ended three years ago. With the death 
of the Lightborn. For 4,000 years, they had reigned over this world, seven arcanists who, through their magic, had acquired eternal life. In a time of chaos, they gave mankind what they thought it needed most, to be ruled over with an ironclad, fair hand. Within just one century, they united the shattered lands, and a single century later, their human origin was forgotten. They became gods, or lightborn, as they let themselves be worshipped as. Yet the longer they reigned, the louder the voices grew that accused them of tyranny. The loudest being that of Naranzul Aranthiel. And he succeeded in achieving what was once thought impossible. He gathered an army overturned the Lightborn, and gave back freedom to mankind. However, the price for this was high, because where there are gaps of power, fights erupt. As such, this world grew into what it is today, shattered, riven, and broken into pieces. But all of this was merely a diversion, so that no one would notice something else. The death of the Lightborn had set something into motion, a clockwork, having long stood still. Its gears now once again slowly began to turn. This is the story of someone who wanted to be free. That was a bit harsh. I, I'm just nervous, that's all. It was that dream again, wasn't it? Uh-huh. Seriously, if we had a penny for every night since we met where you woke up screaming, we'd probably be traveling to Andoral in our own starship and... Well, not like this. Some things never change, I guess. Do you ever ask yourself if maybe you blame yourself for all of this? For what happened to your family, I mean. None, you're right. But, who knows, maybe everything is gonna be different now. It's strange, isn't it? The way life sometimes goes. Now, if you had told me that a few weeks ago, I would have at the very least called you insane. But if the stories are true, there's no better place for a fresh start. Can you believe it? Apparently there aren't even any slaves on Enderal. It's amazing. Only this whole blind passenger thing is making my headache. We're talking about 500 pennies here. Even if we're able to find a job over there, we will still need the money for ourselves. Don't fool yourself. What we're doing here is theft. Unfortunately. But anyway, what's done is done. I just hope the Andralians are easier on Outlanders than the Neremis are. Your mother was a fugitive as well, wasn't she? Where exactly did she come from? You've told me a hundred times, but uh, I just keep on forgetting it.
Kilei. She fled from that civil war the Black Crescent caused, didn't she? Ironic, isn't it? Seems some parents pass on their fates to their children. <sighs> anyway... Whew, I'm gonna hit the hay for an hour or so. It's your turn to stand... Wait. You hear that? Shit. Someone's coming! Women nowadays just don't want a man to court them anymore. That's the problem. I tell ya, sometimes I long for the good old days. Back when I could lift a skirt and nobody would bat an eye. Anyway, enough of the chit-chat. Now where did I put that key? Oh, blazes, what do they want down here? The lamp! Quickly! Put out the lamp! Good. Now, quiet. Ah, here we go. Ah, it smells like Vautier's balls down here. Say now, what's that chest supposed to look like? Small, with the crest of the Blue Island Coalition on it, I think. Ah, yeah, right, right. The Black Guardian knows what the captain wants it for this shortly before arriving. You go look upstairs. I'll see if I can find it down here. Okay. Oh, shit. They don't leave us any choice. We need to do something quick. You take on the old guy, I'll take the young one. Go! Oh man, that wasn't part of the plan. <sighs> Not at all. Oh, what in blazes are we going to do now? Yes, yes, of course. That that makes sense. One of them said it's not much longer until we arrive. With a little luck, no one will notice they're gone until then. Come on, help me search. There must be a rope or something. And I thought we were over the hump when we made it on board. <sighs> It just can't ever be easy, can it? Please don't tell anyone we're down here. Please. We didn't mean any harm. These guys were just... You ask that I not reveal you, for your intentions were not evil. And I believe you. But sadly, it's not compassion that rules my deeds. The first beat of a wing must happen. It is the only way the probabilities will fall into place. This is the way it has to be. The way it has been for eons. I am sorry. What the? Oh no! No! What are you doing? Please! Please don't leave! We, we, we just wanted to... Oh, 
cruised in, the two of you hid in the cargo and lived on our stocks. Then when Rick and Seabald found you, you gave them a beating. And all of a sudden, a veiled woman appeared and knocked you out with wild magic. Is that about it? Yes, I, I know it sounds crazy, but it's the truth. Please, my dame, we... We didn't have a choice. You've got to believe us, the war. It, we, we just wanted a second chance, that's all. A second chance? Yes, I think I understand you. You wanted to start a new life in a new land. And as my ship is one of the only ships still sailing the route since the wars, you were simply forced to board without paying. Yes, we could work for you, you, you know? We could scrub the deck, peel potatoes, anything to pay off our debt. And as soon as we've arrived... Heartbreaking. How truly, truly heartbreaking. But let's be honest. You did have a choice. You could have signed on like all the others did, but you didn't. Instead, you've nested on my ship like flesh maggots, enjoying the good life while my crew actually had to earn their keep. And now you're feeding me this bullshit about veiled women and wild magic? How stupid do you think I am? I know your kind. You are cutthroats. Filchers. At least have the guts to admit it. What? No, 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 no. You, you're wrong. We, please, just let me explain. I... I don't give a shit for your explanations. If there's one thing I hate more than cowards, it's people trying to pluck my heartstrings. You two are scum. And there's only one kind of punishment for scum on my ship. Pull him up, Ruger. But Captain, they... Do it. Of course, Captain. I'm sorry, lad. You should have stayed in their room. But... You, you can't do this. Oh, believe me, I can. <laughs> no, I... <laughs> Oh, well, look at that. Someone's woken up. Rise and shine. Tie him and his friend together and feed them to the fish. Good luck in your new life, friend. Is time to the dead. Dreaming, dreaming anyway. They come from the same so many place. people just talk, 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 and How never. How to be powerless? This is about your damn pride, team. I know I'm not real. At least not according to your definition. I know but damn well I do. It's just what? Christmas. And there is nothing I can do. This isn't happening. But then again, this just isn't happening. What is reality anyway? Selfish fool!